Hey guys, welcome back. Mini season was great this year. We caught our limit of lobsters on both days and shot some really nice fish, including Justin's personal best, mangrove snapper. In this video, we show you our lobstering techniques and voice over a few of those deeper dives that we usually do. Plus, at the end of the video, you'll get to see a really nice black river that Justin pulled out of about 50 feet or so. So stay tuned. We hope you enjoy. All right, guys, just got to the spot. We're gonna jump in and uh, start throwing some lobster on the boat. Hey guys, after getting our limit of lobster, we decided to head into the reef around 30 to 40 feet and chased after some of these mangrove snapper on the deeper ledge. This time of year, we get some really nice mangroves, especially in these caves and nice reefs in that deeper areas. You can see right here, we got one rocked up way up in the back of this cave. And most of your smaller fish will hang out around the around the tops of the ledges and the bottoms of the ledges, but the really bigger ones, the smarter fish, are going to be up on those rocks. So don't be afraid to get up in there and go after them. Yeah, you can see here, the shot I had in him wasn't the best. It kind of just glazed the side of his face. He tore off right there. When we lose a fish like this, we always like to come in and do a recovery dive. Um, I got the flashlight this time. Luckily for us, when I pull up ready to go, he is right there. So, real good shot on the second time, and he is not going anywhere. We received a couple of comments about how we um, were swimming past lionfish. We don't always swim past lionfish. When we see some nicer ones like these, we really don't like unloading our guns just in case a nicer fish would have swim through, but we always try and make an effort to take those fish off the reef. And you could see in that last video, I jabbed them. Yeah, for sure. It. These lionfish, they're not the smartest. If you get them pinned up against a wall, you can take the, the point of your spear and just ram it right into them and they won't go anywhere. We do that all the time. See here, I'm checking a, a little hole, seeing if there's anybody in there. Look to my right. And pretty nice mangrove right there. Real close. By the time I get the gun up, he's actually so close to me. Can't really shoot him, so I gotta wait for him to move back a little ways. I get a real nice shot. He lets me take my time. Stone. Easy stone shot. Really nice fish. Yeah. We had some friends in from out of town. He, he wanted to see how big he was, so you could tell. This is Justin diving, checking another little ledge. Look up and 
nice mangrove came to check him out and he wasn't ready for him. This fish is swimming away from me, so I give him a couple grunts and yeah, take took a, real a little nice bit of a long shot. But a little bit of a further shot, but we got the fish. That's what that's what matters. This is a new gun for Justin. Actually, this is one of the first trips he's had it out. Just switched over to the. Uh, we're sh I'm shooting a Koa right now. It's a Koa Euro 110, and I threw a Koa uh, 60 meter reel on it. And yeah. Justin had been using like a 54 inch rifle for the longest time, but decided to go for something a little bigger for these deeper dives. And reels are not something we're used to, and you'll see here in this video how I utilize um, the reel. We're diving in strong current here, and I shoot this fish way back up in a cave, and it's really nice for me to be able to keep tension on him so that my shot doesn't pull. Yeah, right here you can see him, his lips hanging out. That's my biggest mangrove snapper, weighing in at just over six and a half pounds. Yeah, real nice fish. Weighed him with the boga once we got on the boat. Personal best. On the new gun. Yeah. We really like to finish off the fish with the knife if it's not a stone shot. Blade him too. Helps keep the meat good. You can see here, laying on the bottom, grunting a little bit, and the mangroves come straight to us. We have a really good video about this strategy, so if you're interested, check the link at the end of the video. That's it for day one. Stay tuned for day two. We do a lot more spear fishing and catch a bunch more bugs. Stay tuned. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here yesterday because I had to work, but I'm here today so we can slay some lobster. Well, we just got to our first spot, so we're gonna get ready and we're gonna hop in. Alright, so for this next clip right here, I got my good friend Gage, he's from Colorado, and he comes in and he shoots this really nice mutton snapper. Yeah, it's crazy, this is his first fish 
ever with a spear gun, and it's a real nice mutton. And I mean, you can see he just went down there just like an absolute natural left hand on the back of the gun to give him some more support. You can see his right arm was fully extended, looking straight down the shaft. Yep. Unfortunately, Flopper didn't deploy because the fish was pressed up against the rock. You could see me there trying to push the shaft through, but I couldn't get it around. Derek went down, made a recovery dive, and we were able to get this fish to the boat. Like I said, this is an absolute stud for a first fish. We couldn't be more happy for it. I mean, I had been spear fishing for, for years before I got a mutton like this. Video doesn't do him justice, but we got some pictures at the end. Hell yeah, Real dude. nice fish, especially for a first. Nice fish. So this next clip here, it's about 50 foot of water. Justin's dropping down to the sand, brand new gun. And we're diving in real strong current here, and you can see how all these um, little grunts and bait fish are stacked up on this little ledge right here. And typically, whenever you see life like this, it's a real good indicator that there's maybe some bigger predators in the area. So you can see I'm kind of just cruising along, pulling myself along the bottom, not making such an intrusive presence, and I'm really just looking real nice and gentle through these holes. Stick my head down to the sand here. And you can see that tail right there. A really nice black grouper. I stick my gun in the hole. And he kind of catches my movement. And you'll see him turn around here to check out what I am. See him right there. Line up and take a really nice stone shot. That fish didn't even quiver. Yeah, you can see he got the gun set up for shooting in open water with all that double wrap. I really, yeah, I really would not recommend shooting with more than a single wrap on a gun if you plan on doing a lot of hunting in the rocks. Yeah. Because it just gives that fish so much extra slack to where, you know, he could tangle you up or he could run you in the rocks oh, yeah. deeper. And it's a just a big fish. headache. But real nice fish. Great way to top off mini season. Alright, y'all. We just got back to the house. Caught a whole mess of lobster. Managed to get a nice mutton and a pretty decent grouper towards the end of the day. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, be sure to like and uh, follow and subscribe and catch you later. Hit that thumbs up. <laughs> Hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up, buddy. Hi, man.